I'm happy that Helen uh, showed you all those figures and numbers because I'm not going to show any or at least maybe, maybe some, but not, not, not that much. The other difference is that I'm not going to ask if anybody here is in the audience is from Finland, <laughs> because I probably know the answer. Uh, yes, uh, I am, my approach and my, uh, uh, my uh, point of view in this presentation is from the governance uh, perspective, uh, and I'm trying to contemplate a little bit and maybe later in our panel even more about what evidence do we have on the good governance or our attempts to, uh, to make our governance better. Uh, also, what, what is the contribution to the uh, uh, fiscal crisis, economic crisis, uh, if any? Uh, but now, I want to thank the organizers and our hosts for, for uh, being invited to this event, particularly because it's not often that the, the uh, a person has an, has an opportunity to come, come here from Finland, because Finland is very far from where we are now. It's there. Finland is uh, in the corner of, of uh, uh, the northern corner of Europe. <clears throat> And uh, when I was working in the OECD secretariat about 20 years ago, I had an American boss who used to tease me sometimes, asking, asking me, you know, how does it really feel to come from the periphery of the periphery? And he was, of course, a very uh, so sophisticated and civilized man, but he said, he, this was my, his message was to me that, that most of the average Americans would think like that if you heard that somebody comes from Finland if they knew where Finland was. So, but on the other hand, you may know that uh, Finland scores very high in many kinds of international comparisons. Uh, maybe the, the most known is the, the uh, <clears throat> our... Uh, uh, education performance, performance in, in, in our education, particularly uh, in, down in the da uh, lower uh, grades of education, but also in other, in other aspects. I think that in some, uh, some comparisons we compete quite closely with Australia. Uh, just recently I, I read something about what is the best country to live in, and I'm not sure. I think that Australia and Finland over the last years were kind of like on the top, but in another year, Finland was the first, and in another year, Australia, and so on. So we have much, much in common, despite of the, the long distance between us. But a uh, little bit of the, the, the governance. Uh, I, I'm going to concentrate on the, on the latest governance uh, uh, reforms or, or initiatives that we have in Finland. But in order to understand for you, I, I think I have a, I, I, I feel a need to say something about our background, a uh, little bit more data than, than, than the obvious things that you probably know, that uh, instead of kangaroos and kiwis, we do have reindeer, and instead of uh, the wizard of Oz, we have uh, Santa Claus, and also nowadays we have more and more of angry birds. But as to the history, uh, it's, it's uh, important, I think, uh, to understand our governance system. Uh, it's important to know that for, for 700 years, Finland was a province of, of the Kingdom of Sweden, uh, part of, uh, with the same status as any other uh, provinces there. In 1809, Finland uh, became uh, a Russian, uh, part of Russian rule, but uh, Finland was given a, a, uh, an autonomous status as a, as a Grand Duchy of Finland, which meant that I, we, we were able to keep our administrative tr structures uh, from the Swedish time, and uh, we had, a, uh, we had our, our own autonomous uh, government. Uh, of course, uh, the, the main decision-making power was in, 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 in uh, in Russia, but uh, but we we were able to have the the embryo of, of what we what was to become our own government. Uh, Finland got independence in 1917, and we were able to and, and ever since we have had this Western kind of governance structures. 
maybe three things I think are very characteristic to, to anything that we do in Finland uh, in, 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 in terms of government, government and governance. First of all, it's, is that we are very realistic people uh, in our politics, and I think that it's in our DNA, not, not uh, least because uh, we are a small country, 5.2 million people, uh, with a big neighbor. Uh, there was a very uh, popular president after the war, after the Second World War, who, who's, who's saying is, is that all wisdom starts from admitting realities. And I think that this has been very much in the, in the deep heart of, of the Finns over the decades and centuries. We're also very pragmatic people. I think that, that the geography has to do with that. Uh, we are a northern country, sparsely populated. We live long, we, in long distances uh, between each other. Uh, we need to uh, find uh, very practical solutions uh, to, to survive in the, in the northern snowy country. Um, even if the weather at the moment is like here, but this is your summer. Uh, then uh, and another, maybe a third characteristic is that that uh, Finland, as a as a as, as a country, which can be said to be far from everything, uh, we have to appreciate very much the contacts we have uh, in, uh, with other countries and and uh, cooperation with them with others. Policy making. Uh, we are a very strongly committed welfare state. We have a wide spectrum of, of universal uh, public services. Finland is a member of EU since 1995. The Nordic cooperation has been always very, very important to us. Uh, and and one, one issue that is very important in Finland in terms of governance is, is that we have very strong municipalities. Uh, they are structurally diffuse. Uh, self-financed until 80 percent. So the government, uh, the state government, the central government has certain limitations in 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 uh, in, the, in how the public services are provided. But of course, it has a, the regulatory power, power, and and the 20 percent of, of of state subsidies to to municipalities. We are a very consensus-based policy-making country. Uh, we have a long tradition for coalition governments which stay in power for the regular four-year uh, terms. At the moment, we have a particularly interesting <laughs> situation in the government with six parties, six parties at the same time in the, in the, in the government, which, which range from left to, to right. We have highly in autonomous ministries. Uh, our prime minister does not have the... Uh, the, the kind of a role that that, that uh, prime ministers in uh, in uh, Anglo-Saxon or Westminster countries have, uh, our prime minister is what we can call a uh, primus inter pares, uh, rather than, than than kind of a clear uh, head of the uh, head of the government. But uh, the role of the prime minister in Finland has been increased and strengthened. Uh, but there's still a way to go, I think, uh, from my, my perspective, who is working in the Prime Minister's office and trying to coordinate poli policies. Uh, probably that will be the, the, the way we're going uh, forward, is that, that we can see that, and, and with the EU politics, the, it's, necess it's necessary that the, our policies are, are better coordinated than they have been uh, so far. Well, I don't go to all these num These are the only numbers I have <laughs> in my presentation, but I'm not going to go, go to them. You can see them afterwards when the, the presentations will be uh, uh, on the website. But just, some, uh, just the, the overall picture is that, that we are doing very well in many respects if we look at ourselves in, in comparison with the, the average OECD in many of the welfare state uh, dimensions. But we also are alert, alert and, and we are aware that, that we should not be in Finland just uh, self-satisfied with, with where we are now, but that we want to, all, we have to all the time uh, follow very closely where we are going. Uh, for instance, uh, we have a very, very uh, big public s social spending, uh, compar comparatively uh, big still, even if we have done some austerity measures too. Uh, over the years, uh, but but our our uh, population is aging rapidly. I think in Europe, we are the second 
rap, more rap, most rapidly uh, aging uh, country after Italy. Uh, so this is, a, this is one of the starting points for, for everything in the governance that we have to have, we have to look at the longer term prosperities and, and, and prospects as well. Uh, uh, I will perhaps come later more in details if I have time, but anyway, at, even at this stage, I must say that one of the um, one of the sustained policies for quite a long time in Finland has been a systematic and determined uh, uh, investment in education. And that's why we are, uh, uh, for instance, the numbers that we have, like 84% of adults have secondary or upper secondary education. We're very, very uh, proud about those, those figures. And that has been one of the cornerstones of our, our uh, welfare policy lately. Um, another example of where we have to be alar uh, alarmed or alert is that our, our life expectancy is, is, is good, but our health in inequalities seem to be uh, growing. And that's why we, we want to be, for instance, me in the prime minister's office, when we analyze the policies, we, have, we, are, we are encouraged to be uh, critical, self-critical about, uh, about the situation at the moment, so that we, we, also, br uh, we also build the future. Now, something about the governance responses to, I don't go much, much back in the, in the, in the, in the history, but, but uh, about 1990s. Uh, as I said in the beginning, there's very, very little hard evidence on how the governance development and the measures that we have done to improve our gov governance system have contributed to uh, overcoming economic crisis. But uh, the uh, introduction of the new public management system, which in Finland meant more, mostly for, foremost uh, in, in introduction of performance management with uh, flexible four-year uh, expenditure frames, that coincided with our efforts to overcome the 1990s crisis. Uh, and uh, sorry, no. Despite that there is, uh, there's very little uh, kind of hard evidence on, on, on the the contribution, but, but still there are many experts who 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 think and who say that that if we hadn't had the four-year frame budgeting by that time, that would have at least uh, made us worse worse in in tolerating the, the 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 crisis, particularly of course with the public public finances. It's, it's hard to say. The other thing is that if we think about the, the latest developments, of course, Finland was hit quite severely with the uh, 2008 uh, financial crisis. And, and uh, uh, we think that uh, the adoption of the, what we call the program management helped in that sense that, that we really had that, that, that uh, reform uh, made up new processes for the government and one of the processes that, that we, we adopted by that time was regular discussions uh, between the members of the government, uh, between all the members of the government on uh, strategies, which we didn't have so systematically before. I think that it was mentioned earlier that, that the ministers have to have, the politicians have to have like fora and occasions where they, they, they really can contemplate and, and analyze the situation. And that's what we adopted in 2003. Uh, the previous uh, prime minister, the uh, prime minister by that time has said in several occasions that, that the, uh, why we were able to make, make a change in the in the, the, the course of politics by that time, in the mid-term of the government, without the change of the government, was because there was an intensive process by which the government tried to find the, uh, the uh, common understanding of the situation, the situation awareness, and, and then openly and with time discuss the options and, 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 and what, to, what to do during the, the rest of the government term. I, from the previous slide, I wanted to, to uh, say something about our government's foresight work. This is something that we have invested quite a, quite a lot in Finland during uh, last years, 
And uh, one of the things that I wanted to point out here is, is that uh, I think that it is quite exceptional that in Finland we have, in the parliament, we have a futures committee. Uh, that is a committee of members of parliament which, which uh, has a regular uh, communication with the ministers in, in government. And this is a uh, one, one, one uh, phenomena that we have very good experiences of that, that uh, in a way, even if we, the government lives like, like uh, dur <laughs> from government term, for the government term, and the, 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 the parties that are in power uh, in the government at a certain point, of course, more or less look at what they are going to achieve during this government uh, term. But, but in parliament, of course, you have the opposition there, and nobody knows who is going to be in the government next term. So we think that this dialogue between the government and the parliament is, is very, uh, has been very good and, and successful as, an, as a concrete experience, experience in our country. Uh, just recently, uh, we are, as I told you, that from 2003 we adopted this program management uh, system, which consists of, uh, of of new way of looking at or analyzing the uh, the policies of the government. Uh, the policy analysis unit where I'm working was established as part of that reform, and and we have uh, uh, since then we have. <laughs> Since then, we have uh, uh, we have invested a lot in using social indicators uh, when we uh, when we analyze and when we evaluate the outcomes of policies. This doesn't mean the performance information that we have had since we adopted the the, the uh, new public management, but we are more or less more more and more uh, emphasizing that uh, we we need to have a good good uh, system of of informing government about the uh, social developments in the areas of policies that are key to their to their program, uh, we are we are very much talking about uh, evidence-based policy making. Uh, we have done many efforts to to uh, strengthen that in our uh, in our uh, governance and and government's processes. Now. To sum up a little bit, uh, I think that in, in Finland uh, we can say that there are certain very clear strengths in our system. We have a, a proved capacity to combine economic openness and collective safety, safety network. Uh, we, are, we have been traditionally quite prudent in our fiscal, uh, uh, fiscal decisions. Uh, Finland is a very stable uh, con country and nation. Uh, there's a high level of trust in public authorities. We have we we don't we virtually don't have corruption in public administration. This one 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 uh, uh, sc we are here again scoring quite well. Uh, we are an open society. We have strict publicity norms and regulations, and uh, we tend to think ourselves that that we. We are able to find consensus within the nation under exceptionally deep crises. That's why I think that Finland has survived quite well from the uh, latest big economic crisis. Uh, on the other hand, the, uh, the, the, the weakness is that in what we, call, what we can call under normal times, when we don't have like a big, big crisis or the awareness of the crisis, uh, we tend to be... Uh, shy for uh, for uh, for conflicts uh, and 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 also and, and so we are kind of there are never very drastic changes in our policies uh, and this may end up with like with which what 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 we consider as as a weakness is that that we have we think that we have uh, we are having lack of we we are uh, not agile enough in our uh, policy making, we are not proactive enough in our policy making, and that's why we have to uh, all the time develop our, our thinking and not, not to be satisfied with where we are. But uh, about, can, can we say anything about uh, lessons learned? I'm not sure, because 
where, as I told, we want to, we have to look at critically uh, about our, our society and, and the governance all the time. But if there was something, some things that we would like to kind of draw as conclusions or, or, or uh, the cornerstones of, of our, our uh, system is that we have a strong continuity of politics. We have uh, the tendency of, of having long-term commitment to key policies. I mentioned already the education policies, uh, policy that, that the, the, the long-term in investment started uh, with the 1990s crisis, but it has been continuing ever since. We also want to, to learn from the past. We invest a lot of, uh, in, in uh, evaluating the past policies and the past reforms that we have had. Uh, we tend to th uh, think in pragmatic ways, as I, as I said earlier. Uh, for instance, uh, we have, we have a, if we look at the number of, of uh, public servants in the state administration, uh, if we come back to the, the peak year, which was in 88, when we had 128,000 uh, uh, public servants in the state administration, and now, at the moment, we have some 84,000. There has been a, a big uh, shift and, and downsizing, but it has never become a, like an ide ideological thing. We have done it pragmatically, uh, systematically, but pragmatically, little by little, and it has never become an, an, an uh, uh, ideological thing. Neither the uh, contracting out, which is happening all the time and has happened in, in Finland, uh, and, and everything, all the other uh, kind of... Uh, 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 how would I say, uh, the reforms that have downsized the, the, the public sector, they are happening, but, but gradually in Finland. Uh, in the, uh, the way we develop our, our system and our governance, we tend to uh, uh, emphasize the process thinking instead of like box management or... Uh, or, or organizational structures. Of course, we have changed those, and we have to change those as well, but, but it's more like we believe that, that it's processes. In other words, the way people, people behave and people act. And uh, the, the third, the, the last thing is that, that we follow up very closely what is happening in other countries. As I said, we have had, uh, over the years, we have, we have uh, had the privilege of... of uh, of uh, <clears throat> having contributions by outside uh, evaluators or, 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 or coaches, if you like, uh, prominent people like uh, Christopher Pollitt, Gerhard Buckert, <clears throat> Guy Peters from, uh, from the States and so on. And ladies, uh, we were also, we got an input from Canada when Madame Jocelyn Bourgogne was, was coaching us just uh, recently. Uh, this is more like getting an outside view of where we are and, and put Finland in perspective. Uh, we all know that you can't adapt any models. And for instance, we, we quite well uh, uh, follow the, uh, the uh, Westminster countries' developments, but we, have, we take what, what is adjustable for, to our system and what we can use, but <laughs> understanding all the time and realizing that there are certain very big big uh, differences. As I told, one of the key in, in terms of governance is the role of the prime minister and that our ministries are very independent. So we are kind of like, in terms of the, the central government, we are decentralized and, and, and we have to find... That's why I think we are, uh, we are stressing the importance of reforming and, and changing processes not so much the, the other, uh, I mean, the organizational structures. Oh, I'm glad I, I still have five minutes. I thought I'm, I'm, I'm at the end. Because I wanted to say one thing, last thing, uh, the, 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 the most recent international uh, operation, cooperation that we have had is, is a, a, a project that is called Governments for the Future. That, was, that is a Finnish initiative, that was a, a Finnish initiative, it's almost at the end. Our report is coming out uh, this autumn. Uh, this was a, a, a cooperation between only a handful of countries, which we in, invited to, to, to do some more profound uh, analysis of, of, the, of the, 
very up-to-date governance <coughs> challenges. And we made it with, with uh, uh, UK, Sweden, Scotland, and Austria. And in fact, I must say that, that we were very much inviting Australia to join this project at the beginning, and and they were they were very uh, we were very close to get get Australia along, but I suppose for austerity reasons, uh, L and A were dropped out, so it became Austria instead. But <laughs> we hope that that it, <laughs> yeah. or maybe it was just a, just a mistake. But anyway, I wanted to t to to mention this project because. I believe myself that, that we are coming up with, with something interesting there. Nothing so brand new, but I think that, that uh, we, because the idea was to have small number of countries, small number of experts going deeply, you know, more deeply into the, to the real reasons and, and, and arguments for changes at the moment, we could get quite a uh, quite, uh, deep, deep uh, understanding. And I'm, I'm, I, I talked just before this session started with, with our next speaker, and, and, and we, uh, I, I, since UK is with there, he's going to cover some of the issues that we also discussed in, during this pro process. But the, the main thing is that we, we, we touched upon many aspects like, like uh, coordination of policies, uh, strategic management, uh, involving people in uh, co-production, all these uh, kind of up-to-date, uh, fashionable words that, that we use in the, in the most prominent uh, development of, of govern governance. Uh, but the, we always came to the question, uh, are we really in a crossroads of, of uh, development in, in our governance systems? Are we kind of like academy, academians would say, uh, change in the in facing a, a change in paradigm, or uh, or are we really like somebody said, having a conceptual crisis in the public sector governance, and or are we just you know following one one uh, stage in, in in development which started from the NPM. And we have come to the conclusion that, 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 that more or less, at least this group of experts that have been uh, exchanging uh, experiences in our governance, we think that we are in, a, in, in quite a crucial stage. That was the outcome that we came to, the conclusion that we came to, that for many reasons, uh, we are not only in the phase where we need to, to uh, improve the present situation, but there are many, many reasons to think that, that that there are very profound changes going on. And one of the things that we think, no, sorry, uh, is very important, and this was shared by all the governments that were uh, uh, participating in that Governments for the Future project, is that there is a change happening between, in, in, the, in the roles of politicians and civil servants. And that is one of the core, which we don't quite understand yet, what it is about, but it has to do with media, it has to do with how knowledge is, is produced, used, and, and diffused. And, and this is what we are going to con continue and hope. We will have some continuation of this project, and we hope that next time we are not going to drop A and L from that. So, last thing is, I, I have at the end of my, my presentation some... Uh, some uh, web pages that you can follow if you want to know and as you want to know more about Finland. But the last thing is I wanted to tell you that I want to verify that I have been uh, speaking truth to you. I mentioned the, the angry birds at the beginning. and This is, uh, this is not an angry bird, this is our prime minister. <laughs> but I have been speaking truth to you, haven't I? Look at the resemblance. <laughs> <laughs>